liberation lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So how are we living? What is the lifestyle that we're living? Because we're trying to achieve African liberation. So how do we do that? The brother touched right on it when he started talking about the European mindset. The first thing is we've got to reach into that pantry and snatch all those crackers out of there. <laughs> get it out of your mind, get it out of your children's devices. And let's see how we can, you started it out when you said, do you know who you are? So once you've obtained who you are, elevate back up to your African self and in living an African and, and obtaining African liberation is to live an African liberation lifestyle. Ashe? Okay. So for some people, um, it could you get an idea and it takes you a few weeks to just tune yourself up because we have a very educated population. Um, but for some people, even if you're well read and you attend every forum and you think you know all there is to know, you know, it could take months, it could take years, it could take a lifetime. But as long as we're progressing and we're conscious of it, because everybody that says they're woke is not necessarily awake. You may have hit the snooze button. <laughs> so let's build towards it, okay? So I have three very specific points that I wanna hit on to obtain that lifestyle. But as you all know, we have to have a whole nother forum for that. We, need, we gotta set up a whole nother session. So I'm just gonna start with my top three, okay? Number one, seek the counsel of your elders. Not the scrolling headline of what's on Facebook this morning. See, young people, we think that we know so much, but unless you bow to the feet of your elders and heard a story, and learn something real about the world, then we're really, we're really just babes. You have to seek the elder's counsel. There's a reason why the saying goes, every time an elder dies, we lose a lover. So with all of that knowledge, with all of that wealth, we cannot let the jewel of speaking to our elders not build us. And that's, and I'm talking about everybody from, when you were born in between 1940 to 2017 and a half. It's important. And to the elders. Now, I keep telling these children that I'm turning 26, but I have four of my own and they're catching up. They're catching up. One year I went to 27, 28, but the truth is, <laughs> Even at my age, I've got some shaping to do because of these little ones. I'm, I'm a young mother, but now I've got these little ones. So what I say from the elders to the young people, let's learn how to embrace where we are in society so that we can keep up with them. Because as an elder in my refusal to put the devices down, no cell phones, blah, 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 I gotta consult with my seven-year-old to, to navigate my smartphone. Mm. <laughs> so with the guidance of my elder, we know what we need to do, okay? So seek the counsel of your elders. My second thing is do it with your family, you know? Um, take your children with you. Invite someone, if, so African liberation and your lifestyle that you're living 
it becomes you. And I've seen Africans hide the fact that they're African. They, they hide that the fact that they're African at work. They hide it from their family. They hide it, you know, the children are like, kind of like half Europeanized. They still, you know, they were sure they, you know, there's some deep crackerizing that's got to happen. <laughs> Um, but live it and live it fully. You know, be who you are. And and I'm not as liter literal as my brother because I asked the ancestors to speak through me, but I did put my speaking points. Okay. My third thing, which is the most critical of them, is the relationship that you have with your ancestors. Now, this was one thing that, unless, I, I, I don't know if I missed it, but in all of the history of the three tribes that we've just heard of and the things that have gone on um, in Africa over here to the continent, I believe that one of the greatest downfalls or woes of how we got to the position of where we are is when we were, when it was taken from us our ability, our freedom to access our ancestors, to venerate our ancestors. I cite the Haitian Revolution. If you've seen the film, the film recently uh, of the Haitian Revolution, if you know a Haitian, if you know the story, they weren't in the woods with guns and and AKs and whatever um, firepower existed during that time, during that 1804 time. These people knew to get to Ogun, call on their ancestors, and liberate themselves as Africans. They knew to do this. These were the Africans that jumped off of the ships, y'all because I'd rather die than be a slave. Hey. Mm -hmm. I know that the place that I'll end up is better than that. Hmm. So when we embrace in our mind, see, I don't have to, you don't have to be in chains to be a slave. It's about what's going on here. I can enslave your mind and have you enslaved forever. So why are we letting them trying to take our magic because we think it's bad, because we think it's voodoo or hoodoo or that's what you heard or that's what's being passed down. We really need to deep, dig deep, deep into this relationship with the veneration of our ancestors. And they really don't ask for much because we've spent a lot of time venerating other people's ancestors. We spent a lot of time doing that. But our own people, our own blood, ancestral veneration is a very simple process. Um, it is a two-way street. To get, we give. You can't just get, 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 get and not give. If you have a picture of your ancestor, if you don't have a picture, call your auntie Mabel, you know, the one that keep all the pictures in the album. And, okay, tell them, to, tell them to send you those obituary and them pictures of your great, great uncle Jeff the one. Tell them to send you those pictures. I'm living a journey, y'all. And I'm like Nemo, I'm swimming upstream. I'm not swimming against the tide anymore. I know who is moving me. I know what, what is propelling me forward. So if you can't get a picture, write their name if you know it. And now they've been recognized. Give them a glass of water. There has to be water. And this is the the, the baby steps of setting up an altar in your home. And the third thing they need is a candle. 
white. Now, I usually don't recommend Disney in general understandings of things, but this movie Coco that came out last spring, if you didn't get a chance to see it, I know because everybody's like, I ain't going to Disney. I don't support him either, y'all. Okay. <laughs> but they tell the story of Coco, the day of the dead, because the Mexicans were the old man people and the old man people were Africans and they celebrate the day of the dead, their ancestors, in the time that their ancestors walk the earth and they bring the gifts and the, and the ancestors enjoy it and they consume it. Cause ain't no different from giving your ancestors something physical than when you, when you show up to a funeral thinking the dead gonna just sit up and smell the flowers. We gotta do it. Do it in the afterlife because I'm telling y'all this Coco, I think it's a Pixar. Go see it. Take the children to see it. And it gives that. So we got a picture. We have a glass of water. And change the water. Like would you sit up, would you drink a glass of water that's been sitting since yesterday on the counter? You just set it there and then the next day you come back for it? Because you praying to make sure your OUC get paid. And that your lease is covered. And 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 that there are breakthroughs in your family and that love is instilled in to protect you, to guide you, to be with you. So change the water. And also, and lastly, a live plant. If you can't get the plant, it can wait. Those first three are really the top three. The plant is just, you know, so that we can recognize them. Um, I can't think of African liberation again I can't separate African spirituality from African liberation sure. African spirituality is African liberation right. <coughs> you know I, I grew up in the church um I grew up with a very strong Christian background, and I know y'all. <laughs> I get it. Mm. I got family too. My mama praying for me every day. <laughs> no, actually, end quote. Gonna bust hell wide wow. open. <laughs> okay. But here's the thing. I mean, you know. <laughs> I don't never, I will never tell nobody not to do what they do. Okay? Whichever Jesus you pray to, whatever color he is, just whatever you do, you just do what you do. Because even my ancestors of 1800 that I can trace back to, I, I sing them slave rituals, them slave songs, them Negro spirituals. And I be singing to my ancestors because that's what they want to hear. They want to hear the songs in Europe or two. And they want to, you know, but they want to hear them songs, y'all. They want to hear them Bible verses. They want to see these kids. With, you know, I play my tambourine at my Eli. It's all good. They don't mind. <laughs> so do what you do. But do it as Africans. And lastly, I'll just, just say, you cannot truly live an African liberation lifestyle. You cannot truly live an African liberation lifestyle. If you're not observing African spirituality, if you expect to be liberated. So make it your expectation. 